All right. Hello, everyone. Let's take a look at this problem where we have a rectangular piece of a life preserver. I don't know why someone would cut apart a life preserver, but anyway, here we go. And 70% of it is below the surface. So there's a little sketch of the situation. And we can also draw a free body diagram. So there's a buoyant force and there's weight. Those are the only two forces because the object is floating. What else is known? Well, the length is five centimeters or 0 0.05 meters. And the width is four centimeters or 0 0.04 meters. And the height is 0 0.03 meters. And we know this part that's under the water is 70% of the total. And that's about all we know. All right. Well, let's see what we can do about figuring this out. I've written down some of the usual equations that we've been using in this unit. We know we're going to be looking for the mass, and we're also going to be looking for the buoyant force. Let's go ahead and see what we can do with these equations. We can sum the forces. Buoyant force minus the weight is equal to zero. So the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the object. So we know that much. We also know the volume uh, equation here. That's just 0 0.05 meters times 0 0.04 meters times 0 0.03 meters, so the volume, we can get that right away. 0 0.05 times 0 0.04 times 0 0.03, and we get 6 times 10 to the negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 cubic meters. Let's see, we can look at, we could take this equation, so the buoyant force, let's see, how much do we know? Well, there's the density. It's not the density of the object, though. That's the density of the water. And since it's in the ocean, we're going to use the value from our equation sheet, equation sheet for salt water. G, remember that's a scalar. And then we've got our volume here. And here we can calculate our buoyant force at 1,025 times 9.8 times 6 times 10 to the negative fifth. And that comes out to be a buoyant force of 0 0.6027 newtons. However, if we look back and we say, wait a minute, what volume did we use? This is the volume of the object, but this volume is supposed to be the volume of fluid displaced. Okay, so if we're supposed to use the volume of fluid displaced, we need to modify that. So we need to say, wait a minute, the volume of fluid displaced is equal to 0 0.7 times 6 times 10 to the minus fifth. That is based on our 70%. And so that, let's see, 6 times 10 to the minus fifth times 0.7, that's going to be 4.2 times 10 to the minus fifth cubic meters. And then we put that value in there. And that gives us a buoyant force of 0 0.422 newtons. All right, then we can take that value and plug it in there. So we get a weight of 0 0.422 newtons. And that's equal to the mass 
times 9.8 meters per second squared. And so the mass comes out to 0 0.0431 kilograms. So there we've got our buoyant force, and there we have our mass. So that mass, 43.1 grams, and it compares with the answer given at the top. We're all set. Our solution is complete. We solve for both the mass and the buoyant force. We got positive values for both. The units worked out to what we expected. So were the answers reasonable? Well, 43 grams, that's well, you can see this is well less than a kilogram. A kilogram is about, it was, has a, the equivalent to a weight of 2.2 pounds. And so this is less than 2.2 pounds. So I think that does make sense that this tiny piece of uh, life preserver has a small mass and a small weight. Okay. And a buoyant force, well, it's a relatively small buoyant force, and that makes sense for it being a small mass. So as far as we can tell, the answers are reasonable. Sometimes the really ridiculous answers stand out, um, and we would definitely want to catch those when that happens.